you want to do in terms of the... Well, what I think we should do in this model is that we just simply have the first four tells and we join a lot of players with them. We just, we sing it almost as soon as... But is that repeated as well or not? Is that? Sorry? Is it repeated? repeated or not? Oh, yeah, yeah. So the last words uh, sang this song, etc., etc., etc. Lord, and then we have Lord. <laughs> Back a page, another song. We've done the harmony for this, haven't we? Yeah. yeah, so let's do the verses for this one in harmony. So here's the response. fairly self-explanatory. Now, where, where are we? Do you, in fact, do you want to explain it so that it's not self-explanatory, so it's in so fact explained? As soon as we finish rehearsing, all the lights will go out, apart from what's known as the loop light shining on the lectern. Um, it robes as soon as we can, also, and we actually just start the service here. Um, those who know Easter Vigil, there's a great big roaring fire outside, um, or a great...
phrase, your whatever. Um, now, Father O'Neill is carrying the Paschal candle in, <coughs> but he's not singing. So I'm going to hover around the place and watch, where, watch when he lifts it up. The first time he's going to lift it up is in the porch, so we won't see him. Um, but I'm going to hover in such a place that I can see him. But the lights will be off, and so any time I go, in whatever key I go, Lumen Christi, Deo Gracias. Okay, and that will go up a pitch every time. And if I start it too high as a tenor, my apologies to basses and altos. And when all that happens, the bishop goes to the chair, puts the incense in, blesses it, looking candle, etc., etc., etc. Yeah. I think it's when he's back, when he's sitting down again, yeah. when he's back to his cathedral. But that'll all, that'll all happen. Are we all happy? Yeah. Wait. Apologies that we've really been rushing through because there's a lot to get through tonight. So uh, at any point this week where I've been frosty or annoyed or annoying, many apologies. Um, this is a gorgeous service. I always love Easter Vigil. It's just, it's just amazing. So enjoy the service and just watch whichever one of us is standing at the front waving. What the, ch the, the, the change I'm going to make is for Jake, the next two Fiona, just so that you're more central to, uh, to the Alphas, if that's all right. Thank you so much. Otherwise, that will all be splendid. I have no idea what I'm doing, so you, know, you just, just follow me. Excellent, right, let's robe if we have them.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, be with you. And with your spirit. Dear brothers and sisters, sacred night in which Christ passed to life, church and her sons and daughters scattered throughout the world, come to watch and memorial of the Lord's Paschal celebration this way were is then we shall have the sure hope of and living with him in God. Let us pray. God who through your Son be put upon the faithful the faith of your glory sanctify this new fire we pray and grant that by these paschal celebrations we may be so inflamed with heavenly desires that with minds made pure we may attain a festivities of an ending splendor. Amen. Christ, the beginning, the end, and the omega. All and all ages, to him be glory and every age forever and ever. Amen. By his holy and glorious wounds, may Christ and protect. The light of Christ, right and glory, dispel the darkness of our hearts and minds. It's gone out.
spread the light around. Spread it down the back. Spread it right back. Spread the light right back. Don't just stand there with no holding it to yourself. Spread it to everybody else. <coughs> no, your arms. We're, we're just hanging around in, the, in this area here. Exult, let them exult, the hosts of heaven. Exult, let angel ministers of God exult. Let the trumpet of salvation sound aloud a mighty king's triumph. Be glad. Oh. Uh -huh. 
rejoice, let Mother Church also rejoice, arrayed with the lighting of his glory. Let this holy building shake with joy, filled with the mighty voices of the peoples. It is truly right and just, with ardent love of mind and heart, and with devoted service of our voice, to acclaim our God invisible, the Almighty Father, and Jesus Christ, our Lord, His Son, His only begotten, who for our sake paid Adam's debt to the eternal Father, and pouring out His own dear blood, wiped clean the record of our ancient sinfulness. Peace then are the peace of Passover, in which is slain the Lamb, the one true Lamb, whose blood anoints the doorposts of believers. This is the night when once you led our fathers, Israel's children, from slavery in Egypt and made them pass dry short through the Red Sea. This is the night that with a pillar of fire banished the darkness of sin. This is the night that even now throughout the world sets Christian believers apart from worldly vices and from the gloom of sin, leading them to grace and joining them to his holy ones. This is the night when Christ broke the prison bars of death and rose victorious from the underworld. Our birth would have been no gain had we not been ready. O wonder of your humble care for us, no love or charity beyond all telling, to ransom a slave you gave away your son. O truly necessary sin of Adam, destroyed completely by the death of Christ. O oh, happy fools that earn so great, so glorious a Redeemer. O oh, truly blessed night, worthy alone to know the time and hour when Christ rose from the underworld. This is the night of which it is written, the night shall be as bright as day, dazzling is the night for me and full of gladness. The sanctifying power of this night Dispels wickedness, washes faults away, restores innocence to the fallen, and joy to mourners, drives out hatred, fosters concord, and 
Brothers and sisters, now that we have begun our solemn vigil, let us listen with quiet hearts to the Word of God. Let us meditate on how God in times past saved his people, and in these the last days has sent us his Son as our Redeemer. Let us pray that our God may complete this paschal work of salvation by the fullness of redemption. If you'd like to blow your candles out now, please, and sit down. A reading from the book of Genesis. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Now the earth was a formless void. There was darkness over the deep. God's spirit hovered over the waters. God said, let there be light. And there was light. God saw that light was good, and God divided light from darkness. God called light day, and darkness he called night. Evening came, and the first day. God said, let there be a vault in the waters, divide the waters in two. And so it was. God made the vault and they divided the waters above the vault and the waters under the vault. God called the vault heaven. Evening came and morning came the second day. God said, 
Let the waters under heaven come together into a single mass and let dry land appear. And so it was. God called the dry land earth and the mass of waters seas. And God saw that it was good. God said, let the earth produce vegetation, seed bearing plants, and fruit trees bearing fruit with their seeds inside on the earth. And so it was. The earth produced vegetation, plants bearing seeds in several kinds, and trees bearing fruit with their seeds inside in several kinds. God saw that it was good. Evening came, and morning came, the third day. God said, let there be lights in the vault of heaven. Divide day from night and let them indicate festivals, days and years. Let there be lights in the vaults of heaven to shine on earth. And so it was. God made the two great lights. The greater light to govern the day, the smaller light to govern the night and the stars. God set them in the vault of heaven to shine on the earth, to govern the day and the night and to divide light from darkness. God saw that it was good. Evening came and morning came, the fourth day. God said, let the waters teem with living creatures and let birds fly above the earth within the vault of heaven. And so it was. God created great sea serpents and every kind of living creature which created in the, t in the waters <clears throat> and every kind of winged creature. God saw that it was good. God blessed them saying, be fruitful, multiply and fill the waters of the seas and let the birds multiply upon the earth. Evening came and morning came, and the fifth day. God said, let the earth produce every kind of living creature, cattle, reptiles, and every kind of wild beast, and so it was. God made every kind of wild beast, every kind of cattle, every kind of land reptile. God saw that it was good. God said, let us make man in our own image, in the likeness of ourselves, and let them be masters of the fish of the sea and birds of heaven, the cattle and all the wild beasts and all the reptiles that crawl upon the earth. God created man in the image of himself. In the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created them. God blessed them, saying to them, be fruitful, multiply, fill the earth and conquer it. Be masters of the fish of the sea, the birds of the heaven, and all the living animals on the earth. God said, see, I give you all the seed-bearing plants that are upon the whole earth, and all the trees that seed-bearing fruit that shall be your food. To all wild beasts, all birds of heaven, and all living reptiles on the earth, I give all the foliage of plants for food. And so it was. God saw all he had made, and indeed it was very good. Evening came, and morning came, the sixth day. Thus heaven and earth were completed with all their array. On the seventh day, God completed the work he had been doing. He rested on the seventh day after all the work he had been doing. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Let us pray. Almighty ever-living God, who are wonderful in the ordering of all your works, may those you have redeemed understand that there exists nothing more marvellous than the world's creation in the beginning, except that at the end of the ages, Christ our Passover has been sacrificed, who lives and reigns for ever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of Exodus. The Lord said to Moses, why do you cry to me so? Tell the sons of Israel to march on. For yourself, raise your staff and stretch out your hand over the sea and part it for the sons of Israel to walk through the sea on dry land. I, for my part, will make the heart of the Egyptians so stubborn that they will follow them. So shall I win myself glory at the expense of Pharaoh, of all his army, his chariots, his horsemen. And when I have won glory for myself at the expense of Pharaoh and his chariots and his army, the Egyptians will learn that I am the Lord. Then the angel of the Lord, who marched at the front of the army of Israel, changed station and moved to their rear. The pillar of cloud changed station from the front to the rear of them and remained there. It came between the camp of the Egyptians and the camp of Israel. The cloud was dark and the night passed without the armies drawing any closer the whole night long. Moses stretched out his hand over the sea. The Lord drove back the sea with a strong easterly wind all night, and he made dry land of the sea. The waters parted, and the sons of Israel went on dry ground, right into the sea, walls of water to the right and to the left of them. The Egyptians gave chase, after them they went, right into the sea, all Pharaoh's horses, his chariots, and his horsemen. In the morning watch, the Lord looked down on the army of the Egyptians from the pillar of fire and of cloud, and threw the army into confusion. He so clogged their chariot wheels that they could scarcely make headway. Let us flee from the Israelites, the Egyptians cried, the Lord is fighting for them against the Egyptians. Stretch out your hand over the sea, the Lord said to Moses, that the waters may flow back on the Egyptians and on their chariots and their horsemen. Moses stretched out his hand over the sea, and as day broke, the sea returned to its bed. The fleeing Egyptians marched right into it, and the Lord overthrew the Egyptians in the very middle of the sea. The returning waters overwhelmed the chariots and the horsemen of Pharaoh's whole army, which had followed the Israelites into the sea. Not a single one of them was left. But the sons of Israel had marched through the sea on dry ground, walls of water to right and left of them. That day, the Lord rescued Israel from the Egyptians, and Israel saw the Egyptians lying dead on the shore. Israel witnessed the great act that the Lord had performed against the Egyptians, and the people venerated the Lord. They put their faith in the Lord and in Moses, his servant. It was then that Moses and the sons of Israel sang this song in honor of the Lord. Thank you.
Let us pray. O God, whose ancient wonders remain undimmed in splendor even in our day, for what you once bestowed on a single people, freeing them from Pharaoh's persecution by the power of your right hand, now you bring about as the salvation of the nations through the waters of rebirth. Grant, we pray, that the whole world may become children of Abraham and inherit the dignity of Israel's birthright through Christ our Lord. A reading from the prophet Isaiah. Thus says the Lord, O come to the water, all you who are thirsty. Though you have no money, come. Buy corn without money and eat, and at no cost, wine and milk. Why spend money on what is not bread, your wages on what fails to satisfy? Listen, listen to me and you will have good things to eat and rich food to enjoy. Pay attention, come to me, listen, and your soul will live. With you I will make an everlasting covenant out of the favours promised to David. See, I have made of you a witness to the peoples, a leader and a master of the nations. See, you will summon a nation you never knew. Those unknown will come hurrying to you for the sake of the Lord your God, of the Holy One of Israel, who will glorify you. Seek the Lord while he is still to be found. Call to him while he is still near. Let the wicked man abandon his ways, the evil man his thoughts. Let him turn back to the Lord who will take pity on him, to our God who is rich in forgiving. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, my ways not your ways. It is the Lord who speaks. Yes, the heavens are as high above earth as my ways are above your ways, my thoughts above your thoughts. Yes, as the rain and the snow come down from the heavens and do not return without watering the earth, making it yield and giving growth to provide seed for the sower and bread for the eating. So the word that comes from my mouth does not return to me empty without carrying out my will and succeeding in what it was sent to do. The word of the Lord.
Let us pray. Almighty ever living God, sole hope of the world, who by the preaching of your prophets unveil the mysteries of this present age, graciously increase the longing of your people, for only at the prompting of your grace do the faithful progress in any kind of virtue. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. A reading from the prophet Ezekiel. The word of the Lord was addressed to me as follows. Son of man, the members of the house of Israel used to live in their own land, but they defiled it by their conduct and actions. I then discharged my fury at them because of the blood they shed in their land and the idols with which they defiled it. I scattered them among the nations and dispersed them in foreign countries. I sentenced them as their conduct and actions deserved. And now they have profaned my holy name among the nations where they have gone, so that people say of them, these are the people of the Lord. They have been exiled from his land. But I have been concerned about my holy name which the house of Israel has profaned among the nations where they have gone. And so say to the house of Israel, the Lord says this, I am not doing this for my sake, house of Israel, but for the sake of my holy name, which you have profaned among the nations where you have gone. I mean to display the holiness of my great name, which has been profaned among the nations which you have profaned among them. And the nations will learn that I am the Lord. It is the Lord who speaks when I display my holiness for your sake before their eyes. Then I am going to take you from among the nations and gather you together from all the foreign countries and bring you home to your own land. I shall pour clean water over you and you will be cleansed. I shall cleanse you of all the defilement and all your idols. I shall give you a new heart and put a new spirit in you. I shall remove the heart of stone from your bodies and give you a heart of flesh instead. I shall put my spirit in you and make you keep my laws and sincerely respect my observances. You will live in the land which I gave your ancestors. You shall be my people, and I will be your God. The word of the Lord.
Let us pray. O God of unchanging power and eternal light, look with favour on the wondrous mystery of the whole Church and serenely accomplish the work of human salvation which you plan from all eternity. May the whole world know and see that what was cast down is raised up, what has become old is made new, and all things are restored to integrity through Christ, just as by him they came into being, who lives and reigns for ever and ever. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who make this most sacred night radiant 
with the glory of the Lord's resurrection. Stir up in your church a spirit of adoption, so that renewed in body and mind, we may render you undivided service. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. When we were baptized in Christ Jesus, we were baptized in his death. In other words, when we were baptized, we went into the tomb with him and joined him in death, so that as Christ was raised from the dead by the Father's glory, we too might live a new life. If in union with Christ we have imitated his death, we shall also imitate him in his resurrection. We must realize that our former selves have been crucified with him to destroy this sinful body and to free us from the slavery of sin. When a man dies, of course, he has finished with sin. But we believe that having died with Christ, we shall return to life with him. As we know, having been raised from the dead will Christ, as we know, having been raised from the dead, will never die again. Death has no power over him anymore. When he died, he died once for all to sin. So his life now is life with God. And in that way, you too must consider yourselves to be dead to sin, but alive for God in Christ Jesus. The word of the Lord. Most Reverend Father, I bring you a message of great joy, the message of Alleluia. Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. Alleluia.
According to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. On the first day of the week, at the first sign of dawn, the women went to the tomb with the spices they had prepared. They found that the stone had been rolled away from the tomb, but on entering discovered that the body of the Lord Jesus was not there. As they stood there, not knowing what to think, two men in brilliant clothes suddenly appeared at their side. Terrified, the women lowered their eyes, but the two men said to them, Why look among the dead for someone who is alive? He is not here. He has risen. Remember what he told you when he was still in Galilee, that the Son of Man had to be handed over into the power of sinful men and be crucified and rise again on the third day. And they remembered his words. When the women returned from the tomb, they told all this to the eleven and to all the others. The women were Mary of Magdala, Jonah, and Mary, the mother of James. The other women with them also told the apostles, but this story of theirs seemed pure nonsense, and they, had, and they did not believe them. Peter, however, who went running to the tomb, he bent down and saw the binding clothes, but nothing else. He then went back home, amazed at what had happened. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. The last time that we had the Eucharist celebrated in this church was on Thursday evening at the Mass of the Lord's Supper. Yesterday on Good Friday, after remembering that the Lord Jesus died for us on the cross, we received Holy Communion, which had been reserved from the Mass of Thursday evening. And today, Holy Saturday, there's been nothing. It's as if the church like the first disciples, had run away, too frightened to contemplate what has actually happened, that the Lord of glory has been crucified. We stand outside the tomb, confused, lost, weeping for grief, our minds and our spirits filled with the terror of darkness. We began our prayer this evening in that very darkness, we lit a fire and from it took a flame which we shared with one another, passing it around the body of the church until everything was bathed in a gentle light, but enough for us to see and sing of our joy that death and darkness could not overcome the risen conquering light, Lord of light and life, Jesus Christ. And to give us courage, we retold the story of our people right from the very day of creation. We reminded ourselves of how God rescued us from slavery and promised us fullness of life with him one day. We continued the story of God's loving protection 
right up to this day, this night, the feast of the resurrection. In a moment or two, after receiving Janine and Benjamin and Thomas into the church and confirming them, we'll renew our baptismal vows. And in doing so, we will recall our baptism and our confirmation, how we died with Christ in the watery tomb and came to life again in the font of new life. We remember that we received the gift of the Spirit, becoming sons and daughters of the Father, inheriting new life which will never end. Even though Jesus told his disciples all that would happen, they still found it very hard to believe. They wanted to wait by the tomb. The good and faithful women went to the tomb to anoint the body of Jesus. But when they reached it, they were surprised for the stone had been rolled away. They could not understand. They were more confused, more afraid. And the angel spoke to them and said, Why look among the dead for someone who is alive? He is not here. He has risen. Remember what he told you when he was still in Galilee, that the Son of Man had to be handed over into the power of sinful men and be crucified and rise again on the third day. And they remembered his words. They didn't find Jesus in the tomb. Rather, as they turned round to go back to the place where they lived, Galilee, it was there, and it was there that Jesus came towards them and they met him. Later, his disciples met him in the place where they lived, where they worked, in the familiar, the ordinary, the humdrum in Galilee. It was there that they encountered the risen Lord, not as a theory or an idea, a dream or a wish, but as the risen Lord of life. And as they went about their work and resumed their lives, they remembered what Jesus had told the women. Do not be afraid. Go and tell my brothers that they must leave for Galilee. There they will see me. And that's what you and I must do. We've met the risen Lord tonight, not as a theory or an idea or a dream or a wish, but as the risen Lord of life. And we've got to go and tell our brothers and sisters so that they stop waiting by the tomb of death and quickly go to find Jesus, the risen Lord, in the places where they live and work, in the ordinary and the mundane, each one in his or her own Galilee. For Jesus Christ is risen, alleluia. He is truly risen, alleluia. And he lives among us today, alleluia, alleluia. Dear brothers and sisters, let us humbly beseech the Lord our God to bless this water he has created, which will be sprinkled upon us as a memorial of our baptism. May he graciously renew us, that we may remain faithful to the Spirit whom we have received. Lord our God, in your mercy be present to your people who keep vigil on this most sacred night. 
And for us who recall the wondrous work of our creation and the still greater work of of our redemption, graciously bless this water. For you created water to make the the fields fruitful and to refresh and cleanse our bodies. You made water the instrument of your mercy, for through water you freed your people from slavery and quenched their thirst in the desert. Through water the prophets proclaimed the new covenant you were to enter upon with the human race. And last of all, through water which Christ made holy in the Jordan, you renewed our corrupted nature in the bath of regeneration. Therefore, may this water be for us a memorial of the baptism we have received, and grant that we may share in the gladness of our brothers and sisters who at Easter have received their baptism, through Christ our Lord. Amen. your sponsors as well. Can't leave them on their own. So, dear brothers and sisters, of your own free will, you have asked to be received into full communion of the Catholic Church. You have made your decision after careful thought under the guidance of the Holy Spirit. I now invite you with your sponsors and in the presence of the community to profess the Catholic faith. In this faith, you will be one with us for the first time at the Eucharistic table of the Lord Jesus, the sign of the Church's unity. The Lord receives you into the Catholic Church. His loving kindness has led you here so that in the unity of the Holy Spirit you may have full communion with us in the faith that you have professed in the presence of his family. And now we're going to administer the sacrament of confirmation. As I stretch my hands out over you, let's let all of us pray that the Holy Spirit come down upon them in his fullness and shower his gifts upon our brothers and sisters here. All-powerful God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, by water and the Holy Spirit, you freed your sons and daughters from sin and gave them new life. Send your Holy Spirit upon them to be their helper and guide. Give them the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of right judgment and courage, the spirit of knowledge and reverence. Fill them with the spirit of wonder and awe in your presence. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. to come and place your right hand on Janine's shoulder. So you've chosen Cecilia, patron saint of music. That's a surprise. (laughs) So Cecilia, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Cecilia, peace be with you.
Peter, what name have you chosen? Moses. Moses, again. That's a, that's a good, fine name with a great tradition there. So Moses, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Moses, peace be with you. May you, may Janine continue to sing the praises of God and may you continue to prophesy the presence of God among us. God bless you. Well, welcome. What name have you chosen? Francis. Francis. A very popular man at the moment indeed. So Francis, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Francis, peace be with you. Francis was a very radical man. May you help us all to accept our faith in a new radical way that begins to change our lives. Francis, God bless. Dear brothers and sisters, through the Paschal Mystery, we have been buried with Christ in baptism so that we may walk with him in newness of life. So now that our Lenten observance is concluded, let us renew the promises of holy baptism by which we, were one, we once renounced Satan and his works and promised to serve God in his holy Catholic Church. And so I ask you, and I ask you really to say out loud, I want to hear the, the I do, I'm going very deaf, and even though I've got deaf aids, I still need a little bit of uh, help to hear. So I ask you, do you re renounce Satan? I do. And all his empty show? I do. And all his works? I do. Do you believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth? I do. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was born of the Virgin Mary, suffered death and was buried, rose again from the dead, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. Amen. Do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting? Amen. And may Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given us new birth by water and the Holy Spirit, and bestowed on us forgiveness of our sins, keep us by his grace in Christ Jesus our Lord for eternal life. Amen.
We now have the prayers of the faithful. On this holy night when Jesus Christ rose from the dead and restored our life of grace, we turn to God our Father in prayer, asking for all our needs. For all who believe in the resurrection, that through our sharing in the life of the risen Lord, this Easter may mark for us a new beginning in our life of faith. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For peace in our world, that the peace promised by the Lord will become a reality for all people. Lord, in your mercy, for all those received into full communion with the church tonight, that they may continue to grow in faith and love of God. Lord, in your mercy, that the people of every nation may come to share the joy of this night and that the good news of the death and resurrection of Christ may gladden the hearts of all. Lord, in your mercy, for all whose lifelong vigil for the Lord has ended and who now sleep in death, that they may live forever in Christ, who has destroyed the power of death and opened the gates of heaven to all. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God, our Father, as we celebrate the resurrection of Christ, your Son, we ask you to strengthen us in faith that we may proclaim the pardon and peace you have given us. We make this prayer through Christ our Lord.
pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Accept, we ask, O Lord, the prayers of your people with the sacrificial offerings that what has begun in the Paschal Mysteries may by the working of your power bring us to the healing of eternity through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, all, at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but on this night, above all, to Lord you yet more gloriously, when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For he is the true Lamb who has taken away the sins of the world. By dying he has destroyed our death, and by rising restored our life. Therefore, Overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exults in your praise. And even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. To you, therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world, together with your servant, Francis, our Pope, me, your unworthy servant, and all those who, holding to the truth, hand on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants, and all gathered here, whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them, we offer you this sacrifice of praise, or they offer it for themselves, and all those who are dear to them, for the redemption of their souls, in hope of health and well-being, and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true. 
celebrating the most sacred night of the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ in the flesh and in communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever Virgin Mary, Mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon and Jude, Linus, Cletus, Clement, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Chrysogonus, John and Paul, Cosmos and Damian, and all your saints, we ask that through their merits and prayers, in all things we may be defended by your protecting help. Therefore we pray graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family which we make to you, also for those to whom you have been pleased to give the new birth of water and the Holy Spirit, granting them forgiveness of all their sins. Order our days in your peace and commend, command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock of those you have chosen. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands, and with his eyes raised to heaven to you, O God, his almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands. And once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. celebrate the memorial of the blessed passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ your Son, our Lord. We, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life, and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance, and to accept them as once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant Abel the just, the sacrifice of Abraham, our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer we ask you, almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us who through this participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your Son may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Come, Lord, the Lord, your servants, who have gone before us with a sign of faith and rest in a sleep of peace. 
Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace. To us also, your servants, who though sinners, hope in your abundant mercies, graciously grant some share and fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your saints, admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon. Through Christ our Lord. Through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord, you sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, O glory and honour is yours forever and ever. At the Saviour's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory is yours, Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign for ever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Jesus Christ, Son of the living God, who by the will of the Father and work of the Holy Spirit, through you death gave life to the world. Free me by this, your most holy body and blood, for all my sins and every evil. Keep me always faithful to your commandments, and never let me be parted from you. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I'm not worthy that you should enter under my hand, but only say the word, and I so shall be. Body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, keep me safe for eternal life. Amen.
especially for those at home, we now make our spiritual communion prayer together. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the holy sacrament of the altar. I love you above all things, and I passionately desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come spiritually into my soul, so that I may unite myself wholly to you, now and forever. Amen.
Let us pray. Pour out on us, O Lord, the spirit of your love, and in your kindness make those you have nourished by the Paschal Sacrament one in mind and heart, through Christ our Lord. We didn't really welcome those who come into the church properly, did we? Let's, let's welcome them warmly, shall we? <laughs> so you are welcome indeed. It's good to have you with us. It's good to have everybody with us this evening as we celebrate this beautiful, beautiful feast. I'd just like to thank everybody who has prepared so many things for these ceremonies to take place, those who've done the flowers, those who arrange the altar, those who get the church beautifully clean, the readers, the servers, and especially the stewards who keep us all in order and safe. But in particular this evening, I'd like to thank the choir and all those people who've joined us during the course of, of the last seven days or so. They've really helped us to praise and worship Almighty God in a very special way. So thank you very much indeed to all of you. Thank you. The Lord be with you. Amen. Bow down your heads for the blessing. May Almighty God bless you through today's Easter solemnity and in his compassion defend you from every assault of sin. Amen. Amen. And may he who restores you to eternal life in the resurrection of his only begotten endow you with the prize of immortality. Amen. Now that the days of the Lord's passion have drawn to a close, may you who celebrate the gladness of the Paschal Feast come with Christ's help and exulting in spirit to those feasts that are celebrated in eternal joy. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father and the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. Go in the peace of Christ. Alleluia. Alleluia.